Hi, this is Harish here. Welcome to DB2 LUW Tips and Tricks video tutorial part 44. In this video tutorial, I'm going to talk about how to force a user to re-prepare a query after execution beyond transaction boundary or unit of work boundary. This slide talks about the problem and the solution. The problem scenario is a dynamic SQL can be prepared once and executed multiple times. So the normal behavior is uh, prepare once, execute many times works beyond unit of uh, work or transaction boundaries. So you can prepare once and execute as many times as possible. Uh, even if you commit or roll back the transaction, you need not again prepare the statement. You can just go on executing it again and again. So this is the normal behavior. Now in this um, tutorial, I'm going to change that behavior so that the prepare once, execute many will work within the unit of work or within the transaction only, not beyond the transaction. So if I uh, do a commit or rollback of the uh, transaction after execute, then again I'll have to prepare the statement even if this uh, statement and the variables everything are the same. Okay, So we will be forcing the user to re-prepare the statement uh, beyond transaction boundaries. So that is the change in behavior uh, that I'm going to uh, demonstrate. So what is the solution? How to do this, right? So we can use pre-compile or bind options on SQL procedures or packages. So whenever you uh, create SQL procedures or bind packages to the database, there are this compile or bind options available. So uh, one such option is keep dynamic. So the keep dynamic is yes by default, uh, which will allow you the normal behavior, prepare once, execute many uh, beyond transaction boundaries. So if you set this compiler option, keep dynamic as no, then uh, the prepare once execute many methodology will work within the transaction only, not beyond transaction. And also another important point to note is the dynamic statement, right? The, uh, once we prepare the, the statement will be caged in the package cage, it will be still there, okay? It will be only removed from the SQL context, okay? So let me uh, give you uh, a demonstration as usual, okay? So here what I'm going to do is I'm connecting to a database test. I'm creating a table T underscore data num underscore execution integer column single uh, column and I'm creating a stored procedure. So let me first run that. Okay. So here you can see it is a very simple uh, procedure. The name is dyneproc. It is inserting one record into the t underscore data table. Uh, we are issuing one prepare command and one, two, three, four execute commands. And uh, the first record will contain the value one, will insert the value one. Second uh, uh, execute statement will insert the value two. Third execute statement insert the value three. Fourth execute statement insert the value four. And after inserting, uh, like after executing two uh, execute statements, right? You are seeing a commit here, right? So which means the transaction is completed. So what should happen is the normal behavior will be like single prepare, all the four executes will get executed. Whereas the, the keep dynamic no option, what it will do is it will execute only the first two execute uh, statements. The third and fourth will fail actually because we are completing the transaction. So that, that's what we are going to demo now, okay? So I have created the procedure. I uh, flush the dynamic package cage and I am showing you the uh, uh, keep dynamic option, how, how it is there once we have created the procedure. So you can see here that I have created the procedure. This is the option that I am talking about. Keep dynamic is yes. So this is a default behavior, okay? So I'll connect in another terminal. Okay, let me open up a new uh, tab. Okay, so here I'll say su hyphen db2 inst1. Okay, so now the procedure has been invoked once. Okay, so after that I'll show you the uh, data which got inserted and the package cage uh, information, okay. So you can see that all the four records have been inserted, which means that four executes has been successfully done. This is the default behavior. 
you can see that uh, this particular uh, statement is available in the package cage also and num execution is 4 right so if i call the procedure again it should become 8 right let's check that okay now before calling the procedure simply what i'm doing is i'm altering the routine package i'm going to set the keep dynamic option no right that's what we wanted to do right so the change in behavior that i'm talking about and i'm also deleting the data from the table okay so the the four records that got inserted right that i have deleted also okay now i again do the same test okay so i go to the another terminal I invoke the command. See, this time the call procedure itself has returned with an error, right? SQL 0518N. So, this is the error we are getting, and it says that the execute statement is not in a prepared state. That is precisely the change in behavior that we have introduced. And I will show you the data also now. Okay. So you can see that see app it has uh, inserted only two records, which means the third execute and fourth execute got failed. Okay. But the statement is still there in the package cage. And you can see the number of execution is two, right? So uh, four plus two, right? So earlier it was four, now the execution is two. Okay. So that's it in this. So this is how we can uh, change the uh, uh, behavior, okay, using the keep dynamic option. I hope this was useful to you. And if you want to now, um, you know, change, uh, you want to make sure that it works, right? Then uh, you have to after this, right? So after this comment, you have to again say prepare. Then only it will work, okay? That's it in this video tutorial. Hope it was uh, useful information to you. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, DB2LUW Academy. See you in the next video tutorial. Thanks. Bye-bye.